All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky. And let's continue. Okay, so. Playing Kano's portion where we dial up Stanley. That's, I should get his pass, his jump out. Oh, no, 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 that's the wrong one. No, 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 no. That's the wrong one. No, 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 no. The wrong one. I thought it was this one. It's not. Okay. But somehow we have to stop him from. No, we have to. That's her. We can't call. We can't call her Tommy. Shoot, man. Let's see, we just did this one. That sends you back up to that one, 1840. That Oh my god, I meant the, the choice. A bluff. That was the high and mighty act. Susumu shouted. Evidently, he shared Aichi's opinion. He began to stomp toward Alfred, but he didn't reach him in time. <laughs> Swing around in the midst of the chaos, I just saw Susan catch one vial of death. So all of them, oh! The desperate shout had come from Atomi. She spied a vial sailing in a high arc away from all the SOS members. Oh! Damn it. I actually launched into motion, ignoring the searing pain in his leg. The falling veil was so far away. Yeah! It was now or never, he threw himself into a dead head, head first slide. <laughs> nice catch! The gang members broke out, cheering in applause. I, okay, I actually got to his fit and eat around, but saw no sign of either Kano or Alphard. Hey, Aichi, if you're looking for the detective, so he gestured with his chin. Aichi looked and saw Kano far away across the scram scramble, chasing after Alpha. Soon both men were lost in the crowd. Aichi would have charged off in pursuit as well, but his wounded leg made that impossible. Get him, detective. He murmured under his breath, we're counting on you. Give me a break. What am I doing wrong?
Through the haze of pain, he saw a bloody arm stretch out before him. Oh, see? Keep her from, we have to keep her from calling his homie. Dude, I'm so sick of seeing that. The mysterious explosion. Can and in. All right, I'm gonna do it just to see. But I just got a feeling they all have to end up at the lab, though. But we have to keep her from calling Hitomi. Figure that part out. Yes. Something the matter, Osawa so asked Riley. No. No, it's nothing. Then if you'll be so kind. Saw so led the way. Can Ann and Tateno follow them toward the storage facility? It took about 20 seconds for the elevator to reach the first basement level. When I think about it, it we kind of blew it, saying, oh, you're Alfred and all that, you know. And then she, like, talked him down. I had the storage area was evidently fairly deep on the ground. The doors opened to reveal a long, straight corridor. There was a door at the far end, device at one side for checking IDs. Kanan approached the device, setting the laptop she borrowed from the security room on the floor in front of it. She affixed a scrap of paper with Kenji Osawa's password written on it to one side of the monitor. Then she connected a series of cables to both the laptop and the device. Tateno kept his hand on his holster as he watched her work. Kanan began to slowly tap away at the... Okay, see, let's try this again. I've seen this dialogue I don't know how many times. See, I'm just wanna see maybe we may not get the same outcome because see this time he knows Kenan is 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 Alfred. The last time we got the bad ending here when the explosion happened, we didn't know. Get out. Oh, here we go. As soon as Osawa and his daughter were out of view, Tatino drew his pistol. Kenan arched an eyebrow. What do you think you're doing? Just get out of here, Tatino pointed the barrel of his gun at Kanan's face. Silently, she did as she was told, turning and walking toward the elevator. He followed a few paces behind. She gave him no hint of resistance. Now Tatino needed to let Stanley know they successfully opened the laboratory door. Put out his own and followed her into the elevator. As soon as he did, Kanan pressed herself flush against the wall. A sudden explosion from within the corridor sent Tatino carrying it off balance. 
as he slammed into the elevator wall. Then as he lay in a daze, the elevator doors drew slowly closed and the cab began to rise upwards. Tino could tell that the impact had broken several of his ribs. Blood rose up from his throat and filled the inside of his mouth. Shoot. He felt his grip, his consciousness fading, but he managed to flip open his cell phone. Stanley. Something happened? Hey, answer me. But it was too late. For Tartino even to hear Stanley's voice. <sighs> Give me a break! What the heck? Gun for. That. Maybe I, I made the wrong dialogue choice. Okay, I didn't say this, so we can. I see. It was a bad ending. Now, it, okay, let's try again. Tony's final moments flashed through Tatano's mind. All right, here we go. If he hadn't fired back then, fired back then, maybe Katoni would still be alive. Perhaps right, so we got a different outcome. We're moving forward, boys. Your friend's entire life was changed because of you. Why hadn't he tried to talk the culprit down? He knew the reason why. Because he loved Katoni. He still loved her even after she'd become Desu Desuke's wife. His desire to be the one who saved her had warped his sense of judgment when things had come down to the wire. Tatino, do you not enjoy being with me? There was a forlorn look on Kotone's face. It wasn't that he didn't enjoy being with her. Her very presence soothed him. But the more serious her relationship had grown, the more it tore at Tatino's, Tatino's heart. The truth was that he didn't really know what happiness was, and so he was incapable of making someone else happy. If it were possible, he'd want Katoni to be smiling always, and that meant her being with someone other than him. I think it would be best if we stopped seeing each other. Tino blurted out the words bluntly, and Katoni's face fell. He hadn't broken up with her because of any lack of feeling for her. Rather, the impulse had actually sprung out of his pursuit of human warmth and his growing fear of losing it. He'd just been so uneasy. More than anything, he'd been afraid that he wanted too much love and affection from Katoni. I... Bit by bit, Tateno lowered his gun, his hand ever more unsteady. His heart was on the cusp of breaking. And still, Kanan continued with her diabolic whispering. You can go ahead and kill me. But if it turns out I'm not Alfred, what then? 
Now she stared at Tatina with an almost patiable look. You have one, you'll have once more more done, once more done something that you can never undo. Something I can never undo. Tatino repeated the words dully, feeling himself forced into a trance. That's right. Could you ever accept that? No, I... I couldn't. Couldn't make this same mistake. His whole body felt like it might fall apart. He wanted to drop to the ground and curl up into a ball like a child. And that's why you can't shoot anyone. I can't shoot anyone. As Tateno muttered the words, Kano's face appeared in the back of his mind. I can! Tears fell from Kano's eyes as he looked down the barrel of his gun at Tateno. He'd become a detective who didn't lose sight of what he was supposed to protect no matter the situation. Tateno had ne nearly forgotten. Nearly abandoned his inward promise to be a detective, worthy of that final salute Kano had given him. He brought his gun back up to bear. Don't be absurd, Kanan mocked. You can't shoot anyone. Actually, I can. The words creaked dryly from Tateno's throat. When there's something I'm supposed to protect, I can shoot. The memory of Kano weeping but taking aim had given him the resolve he needed to face down an opponent who ought to have terrified him. I learned that from someone who was terrible at his job. Oh! Kanan's eyes went cold immediately as she lifted up her gun again. Once more, their eyes locked, sparks of hostility crackling between them. But almost immediately, Tatino could sense indifference and skill between his opponent and himself. The young woman radiated a deadly awe. The force of her stare was like a knife pressed to, to his throat. She had borne witness to carnage and bloodshed, the likes of which he couldn't even imagine. He couldn't win this. She would kill him, guaranteed. Tatino braced himself for death, never taking his eyes off Kanan's. If nothing else, he needed to buy time for Kano to get that password. But could he do that given the opponent he faced? Yes. Somehow, he would do it. As a detective, as a man, even if he had to give his own life to succeed. Even if it couldn't come close to making up for the sins he had committed. Oh, end of his story. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and the series grow. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace.